Hey guys, I'm Hendo, and today we're making a sword from Impact Winter. Our inspiration today is Darcy's vampire hunting sword from Impact Winter, a horror apocalyptic adventure series on Audible. I highly recommend checking it out. It's perfect for building along to, it has immersive sound, talented voice actors, and an epic story written by Travis Beecham, a writer you might know from Pacific Rim and Carnival Row. In Impact Winter, a comet has blotted out the sun, and our protagonist Darcy has to fend off hordes of vampires that now roam freely. And what we're doing today is bringing her one-handed longsword to life. And we're actually making two because one of them's gonna be given away at San Diego Comic-Con this weekend. So we better get started. All sections are timestamped below. Let's go. Also, I know this isn't my usual setup, but hello from Norway. Okay, now let's go. This is a medieval style one-handed longsword, and we're going with a lenticular, narrow, fullered cross section, which is basically the shape of the blade. And this is gonna make it both lightweight and flexible, for swords at least. A fuller is the channel or groove found on a sword. It's not actually a channel for blood. It's just part of a design that's meant to cut away the mass, uh, keeping it sort of lightweight without weakening it too much. I got some notes about Darcy's sword from Travis Beecham himself. He describes the sword as being pretty utilitarian. He said there's swords made for ceremony and swords made for combat, this is the latter. And because I want to do it all, I'm going to do one sword that's this sort of historical utilitarian design, and I'm going to do the other sword that's big and epic and looks more like it does in the one-shot graphic novel. There's a free pattern down in the caption below if you'd like to build along. I've printed out my pattern, which just looks a little bit wobbly because my printer was running out of ink, but here we go. Just assembling and taping it all together, then cutting it out. This purple pattern is going to be my realistic size sword, printed at about 83%. This red pattern is printed at 100% and isn't gonna be as realistic, but is gonna look heckin' sick. So first up, we're gonna cut two pieces of six millimeter EVA foam for the blade. I'm just tracing it right onto the foam and cutting it out with a box cutter. I'm also measuring and marking the midpoint and just drawing that line in. This is just gonna help me line up my pattern so I can mark the fuller, which again is that little groove in the sword. I'm also sort of filling in this tracing so it's easier to see what I need to carve out later. I'm not doing that just yet, I just wanna be able to see it for reference. Now on the back or the inside of each of the blade halves, I'm gonna cut out a groove so I can insert a metal rod that's gonna give the sword some extra sturdiness. So I'm flipping the foam over to the other side to mark where the groove will go. And I want it to start a bit behind the tip so it doesn't poke through after I sand and shape the blade, and I want that to go all the way up through the blade through to the hilt. I'm holding my box cutter at a 45 degree angle along each side to cut out that groove. Between the two halves, this should be enough room for the metal rod to fit between the pieces of foam without poking through to the front side. To help make this a smooth, even cut, I'm eyeballing this part of the knife and basically not cutting past that. This is also gonna help me make sure that I don't cut so deep that I poke over to the front. Okay, time to glue both halves together. This is barge glue, which is a type of contact cement. I'm just brushing it all over, including in that groove. You wanna give it a few minutes to become tacky anyway, so no need to rush this part too much. Make sure the edges are really well covered. You wanna make sure you have a good solid attachment there because we're gonna be shaving this part down to create the blade shape. Now that the glue is tacky, I'm inserting the metal rod and then attaching the other half. Over the next 10 or 20 minutes, I'm gonna keep sort of patting it and squeezing it to make sure that the two halves are stuck together super good. Next up is shaping the blade, which I'm gonna do on a belt sander because it's fast as heck. I'm marking the halfway point between the fuller and the edge of the blade. I'm gonna sand down this outer half to give it that lenticular curve and give the blade a nice sharp edge. Now it's sanding time and slow and steady is the way to go. I'm trying to use pretty large, smooth movements and pretty steady pressure. First, I'm just sort of straight up sanding off a lot of the mass on the edge and then moving it back and forth to give it more of a curved, smooth sanding shape. And of course, eye protection and a respirator are an absolute must. Okay, time to carve out that fuller. I'm using my pattern to trace it out again because a little bit of it got sanded away. I'm adding a strip of masking tape to each side of the groove. This will slightly help me protect the blade when carving and will help me maintain a straight line. You still wanna carve carefully. It's not gonna completely protect your foam from the Dremel, but it does help a bit. Okay, carving time and slow and steady wins the race. I'm using the mini Dremel because it's a little bit less intense and a bit easier to control. I'm carving out the bulk of the middle then going back and touching up the sides along the tape. 
Here's how it looked before I peeled off the tape. And now it's tape peeling time, which is a little rough because I knocked in in a few spots with the Dremel, but it all came off eventually. Oh, and don't forget, you also have to do the other side of the blade. So I'm flipping it over and doing it all again. And yes, we'll also be doing it for the second sword. I'm pretty pleased with how it's turned out. It's pretty clean and even, but it's gonna get cleaned up even more in the Warbla stage. I'm gonna wrap the blade in Warbla for a super sturdy finish. I'm heating up the Warbla and then realizing I should probably do this in the garage where it's not gonna make my whole house super warm. Also, don't forget a respirator. I'm using 3M adhesive spray to secure the Warbla to the foam blade. Black Warbla isn't super sticky on its own and I wanna make sure it's stuck to the foam pretty good to avoid it bubbling or warping if I heat it up again later. Now that it's stuck on there, I'm flipping it over and heating it up again and then using this mascara thing to push the warbler into that fuller. And I'm flipping it over again to sort of push those extra sides of the warbler back a little bit so it's easier to apply the next side. While it's still warm, I'm trimming the warbler up by the hilt. I want this top part to still be exposed foam. It's gonna be easier to attach the cross guard that way. Okay, I've heated and sprayed the other warbler piece. Time to sandwich. And of course, flipping it over again and heating it up so I can push that fuller in. I'm also making sure that the edges of the blade are stuck together super good. And my bad, I did not feel much of me trimming the edges of the warbla, but that's pretty self-explanatory. It's a little jagged in a couple spots, but I'm gonna smooth that down on the belt sander. The warbla is pretty sturdy and actually held up to sanding a lot better than I thought it would. But if you don't have this option, just cut a little bit slower than I did. I'm going to make the cross guard out of three layers of 6mm EVA foam. I'm tracing the hilt on a couple of these pieces just because they're a bit small and it's going to help me line things up and cut a gap in that middle layer. That's where the metal rod's going to go. I'm lining that up just to make sure it's a snug fit, then removing the metal rod and gluing on that top layer. Now I can line up the sword and trace that cross guard. I'm going to cut it out on the bandsaw because it's just going to give a cleaner cut because I'm a little bit too puny to cut through three layers of 6mm foam. I've also realized that this little pointy bit actually goes on top of the blade, so I'm just drawing a straight line across and I'm going to chop that bit off. The guard is also gonna have a hole cut out on each end, which I'm gonna do with a standard Dremel. I have this nice circle stencil, so I'm just picking one that's about the same size as the sanding drum, and I'm marking that to carve out. It's easier to cut out this hole now and then cut out the cross guard. That way, if it gets a little bit wonky, I won't have wasted resources and time. I'm just drilling a little bit at a time because it gets pretty hot and there's hot little pieces of foam flying all over the place. Do be a bit careful. It's nothing that's really gonna hurt you, it's just kind of annoying. No issues here, so time to cut out the full shape of this cross guard. As always, don't forget your eye protection and a mask. Now I'm just rounding out the edges with my Dremel, including the ends and the little hole things. And fit check, just making sure my cross guard looks nice and even. And sneak peek, the hilt is gonna be made out of PVC pipe. I've marked where the blade and the hilt will attach, and I'm gonna sand that down a bit later. But I've also decided we could use just a tiny bit more flare on this thing. So I'm gonna add a couple of thin foam strips to each end of the guard. Should spice it up without taking away from the utilitarian look of the longsword. Okay, now carving down a little bit where the hilt will attach and the blade will attach. This is just gonna make for a sturdier connection. Oh, and I decided to add these little foam wedge things to the tips of the guard. Um, just a little bit more spice, I'm done now. Time to attach this thing. I'm adding some barge glue to the cross guard and the exposed foam part of the blade. Again, over the next 10 minutes or so, I'm gonna keep periodically pushing it together to make sure that it adheres really well. Okay, now we're gonna get back to that little pointy decorative part that goes on top of the blade. I'm oh, sorry, I don't know what the term is. But this is just regular craft foam and I need a piece for each side. I don't really have the time or desire to sculpt this section, so I've decided to take a wee shortcut and just add these little metal studs. And now I'm just gluing that onto the blade with a bit of contact cement. Now I'm gonna attach this PVC pipe hilt. To help make the fit more secure, I'm gonna wrap the metal rod in a strip of craft foam. This will give the pipe a little bit more to grip. Be sure not to wrap too much and make sure the pipe still fits. I've covered the foam in hot glue and now I'm just gonna slide the pipe right on top. I've glued another three layers of six millimeter foam together for the pommel. And this also has a hole cut out, same method as the cross guard. I'm also marking where to shave down the end a little bit to make sure that it fits inside of the PVC pipe. I apparently don't have footage of this, but I cut it out with my bandsaw and now it's time to just shave down the edges a bit with my trusty Dremel. I'm also trimming down the bottom a bit more because I need it to fit in that PVC pipe. And that's getting glued in for real now too. I have these HD foam half round dowels that I'm gonna use for a tiny bit of ornamentation, but mostly to make these attachment points look clean. 
And I'm adding this little prism foam strip where the leather grip will be. Can I get a booyah? This thing is assembled. It's time to seal and prime this thing, so I'm cleaning the surface of the blade a little bit. Next, we're coating it in watered down Flex Bond, which is a glue sort of similar to Mod Podge. I'm actually gonna seal the whole thing in Plasti Dip, but it has a tendency to peel off of Warbla, so it's getting this primary layer of Flex Bond. It's also a little bit easier to seal the holes and the small details this way. With a couple layers of that dry, I can go ahead and switch to Plasti Dip. I've shoddily hung the sword from the center of my garage so I can spray both sides since I'm a little short on time. Don't forget your respirator, this stuff smells nasty. I did two or three layers of this and let it dry overnight, and now it's time for filler primer. It comes out of the can pretty strong, so it's swinging my sword around a bit, but I'm just pretending that that helps me coat all of the sides well. Make sure you're doing this in a well-ventilated area that also doesn't have too much stuff floating around in the air. You want this to dry nice and clean. Now the fun stuff, painting the blade silver. This mirror finish silver paint can be a little bit runny, so I'm gonna do this while the sword is laying flat, one side at a time. Make sure you spray from multiple angles to make sure you coat the whole thing well. If I had more time, I would do lighter and multiple layers. That's just gonna give you a better finish, but I have like one day left, so I'm just gonna do one nice good coat and let it dry for three or four hours. Now I have taped off the blade with a trash bag and some painter's tape, and I'm spraying the hilt a nice shiny gold. Again, make sure to hit it with the paint from multiple angles to make sure you coat the entire thing. There's lots of nooks and crannies here. After a few hours of letting the gold dry, I'm gonna go back and remove the painter's tape so I can let the silver part cure too. So much satisfying peeling. Now this is gonna dry overnight, and next step will be weathering and shading. The metallic paints are pretty slippery, so I'm gonna use oil paint for shading and weathering rather than my usual acrylic paint method. I'm adding dark brown oil paint to the edges of all the details, then blending it out by stippling with my brush. You can also use your finger or a paper towel. Oil paint dries really slowly, so you have lots of time for trial and error and experimentation. It usually takes 12 hours to three days for the oil paint to dry completely. There's no correct way to do this, so do whatever method speaks to you. Also be careful not to accidentally wipe off your work, since again, it dries kind of slowly, but no biggie if you do, you can always add it back. And before I get too far along, I'm gonna add the leather grip. I've cut a long strip of this fake leather fabric and I'm gonna super glue it to the bottom half of the hilt. I don't need to coat the whole thing in super glue, just little bits here and there to keep the wrap in place. Since I can't tuck the end under, I'm cutting the end of this strip at a bit of an angle and then gluing that down. And of course, the grip is gonna get a bit of weathering as well. That's one hilt down and one more to go. Might as well show you what it looks like when it's weathered versus not weathered. You can see that it really brings out the details. I'm also gonna shade the fuller, and again, tape is gonna help me maintain a nice crisp line. You don't need to lay a lot of paint on there, just a little bit of shading is gonna bring out that edge something fierce. More satisfying tape peeling, and then I'm just going over it with a quick wipe with a towel to feather the edges a little bit. And we gotta do it all again on the other side. And the other sword. The last detail I'm gonna add is some fake blood splatter, and I'm only gonna add that to the bigger sword. I have a watery acrylic paint mixture of red and brown, and I'm just flaking it onto the blade. After I also do this to the other side, we are done. Watching. I hope you enjoyed this build of Darcy's Vampire Hunting Sword. Be sure to check out season two of Impact Winter on Audible or wherever you get your podcasts. And you can get caught up on season one today on all platforms. If you're at San Diego Comic-Con this weekend, be sure to stop by the Skybound booth for a chance to win one of these swords. Thanks again to Skybound and Audible for this epic collaboration. I hope you enjoyed this build and get a chance to try it yourself. Until next time, I'm Hendo. Stay crafty.